Welcome everyone. Today we will be talking about A-B testing as a method of testing hypothesis, extracting meaningful data from your application and users, and empowering you with the information to make better decisions. This will deliver a better product, an improved user experience, and more meaningful results for your business. My name is Moreno Garcia. I'm the leader of solutions architecture at Flagsmith, and I've been a solution architect for more than 10 years. We will be talking about A-B testing in the context of using a feature flag management solution. Feature flags are not the only option for A-B testing, but they do come with several advantages. Let's begin. What are feature flags? Well, feature flags started a long time ago with two seminal articles from Martin Fowler and from Flickr back in 2009. So the idea behind feature flags is to separate deployment and release. So deploying code, what developers create, and releasing a new feature, what product managers and business people care about. But let's talk a little bit about what is a feature. A feature can be an interface, something that it's in front of the user or not. Uh, adding a button or a new piece of functionality uh, or even a new algorithm or a data path. So you can measure impact and performance, check things like load and latency, and you can get started with feature flags really fast uh, with Flagsmith, for example. We have a Docker version that you can deploy in two minutes, or you can use our uh, SaaS product. So you build a new feature and you wrap it in a feature flag, and there's a code example right here on the slide. There's a question for most teams, which is you can build something, a feature flag management in-house, or you can buy a feature flag management solution. That is a, a, a question that must be analyzed in your company, in your team, and there's a lot of lots of pros and cons. But with feature flags, you're going to unlock a lot of potential. So the first thing is that you decouple, deploy, and release, but also you can move to a trunk-based development and deploy more often and regularly. Uh, the third point is that you can segment your audience, your users, your customers, uh, and you know segment them by age, by region, or by profile, or you can do something completely different and segment by platforms, mobile versions, or semantic versions, and so on and so forth. It also enables you to do canary releases, stage rollouts, and to reduce or eliminate uh, merge conflicts. Of course, this is our goal here. We are talking about A-B testing. And of course, all of those things uh, with feature flags, you can make your deployments and releases better and faster. There are a lot of tools out there for A-B testing and many for feature flags as well. If you're an engineering heavy team and you're using A-B tests for things like rollouts, one option is to use a feature flagging tool like Flagsmith with your team's existing analytics and observability tools. Many engineering A-B tests are qualitative tests or rollouts. It involves things like testing how samples of your user base react to different features and experiences in your application. For these, you can get the metrics you need by sending flag data to the tools already in your stack. We offer integrations uh, with tools like Amplitude, Heap, Mixpanel, and much more. Rather than adding another decision point, you set up AB in multivariate tests and put users into an A-B testing bucket. These buckets control the specific user experience that is being tested. The analytics platform will receive a stream of event data derived from user behavior. And from there, you can analyze and decide. Now let's take a look at the use case from a real customer, a fintech company running A-B tests with feature flags to test how different versions of a pop-up perform in their app. I hope you enjoy. Then we had a, a case before, a real use case that the reviews of the app were not great. We were not evaluating the application in the app in the exact moment, the best moment that we consider the user might say that he likes, she likes the, the app. 
So we created in the front end two different pop-ups in different, in different places of the app, and we evaluated the feedback of the user depending on the position of the pop-up. And even if we send it pull through Slack, and all of us thought that the winner was going to be like the A, uh, it was like so intuitive for us. But then when we use it, we realized that the best one was the, the B, the second approach. And we did this with Black. And the reviews were much, much uh, better now after this implementation. For analytics, we have different tools. We have Grafana for the engineering team and Looker for the product team. So mostly all these kind of things are on Looker because on Looker, all the, the product people and for marketing people and not engineering people, they have access and they want this metric to plan an action or, or something depending on the result. Let's talk a little bit about the best practices for ABM testing. So first we start with definitions. Uh, make sure you have clear definitions. Define the what and the why. If you're improving something that already exists or you're creating something new, make sure you test one thing at a time and question why are you A-B testing? The answer to those questions is going to help you a lot. Targets and goals, so the how. Choose the specific goals to measure and you can define a clear winner at the end of your test. Tailor your test to specific groups of users. Make sure you segment so you are hitting your target audience. And use clear and measurable metrics. Clicks, conversion rates, satisfaction, whatever you see fit. Then for data visualization and the different stakeholders, it's about the who. Who are the stakeholders? Who is going to weigh in and who is going to make the final decision? Is the data collected reliably and clearly visualized so that the different stakeholders can reason about it? And of course, the when. So make sure you're making changes to add value for your customers, for your business, or both. Implement changes gradually with stage rollouts and make significant noticeable changes in your experiments. With all that, you should have a successful ABM test. Now our co-founder, Kyle, he's going to uh, do a demo of Flagsmith. He's going to show you the basic usage of features, so feature toggling and configuration management environments, how to segment a population of users or customers, best practices for tagging your features, and of course, ABM testing. When first using Flagsmith, it's important to understand how it is organized. Flagsmith is organized into organizations, projects, and environments. Here, we're looking at the Flagsmith organization, and we can see the list of projects underneath it. A project can be seen as a distinct digital offering. For example, if you have a consumer-facing web app, a consumer-facing mobile app, and API, you can create one project and manage a single set of features underneath that for all of your platforms. This means that you don't have to worry about what order you release code in. You can release all of your API code for a feature, front-end and mobile code. And if you want, you can have a single feature flag that dictates whether that feature is enabled for all of those platforms at the same time, getting rid of any race conditions. So now if we go to the Flagsmith website project, on the left, we can see the list of environments, and in the middle, we can see the list of features. You'll notice that the list of features is the same within each environment, but the remote configuration and enable state is different. That's one of the core concepts of Flagsmith, is that within a project, you create a feature once, then you can manage it per environment. You can create as many environments as you want, for example, an environment could be your staging environment, your production environment, or a local development environment. Flagsmith allows you to configure the enabled state and remote configuration of all of your features on an environment level, per user level, and segment level. As well as features having a remote configuration and enabled state, they can also have variations. Variations allow you to provide ABN tests for all of your features. 
We're going to choose a simple example here, the feature Butter Bar. This Butter Bar feature allows you to determine whether a message is shown at the top of the screen on flagsmith.com. I'm going to enable this feature and type in the remote configuration, hello world. Saving this feature, we get to see the butter bar at the top of demo.flagsmith.com. That's because we've enabled the feature and supplied remote configuration for the demo environment of our project. Now what I'm going to do is add a variation. I'm going to call this variation hello world alternate. And I'm going to roll this out to 90% of the users. And just like that, having saved the feature, 90% of the users will see the message hello world alternate, while 10% of the remaining users will see the term hello world. Now what I'm going to do is add another variation, and you can add as many variations as you want. I'm going to give this a weight of 90%, and we can see here that we can't save this feature because the total percentage weight adds to over 100%, so I'm going to reduce this down to 10%. Now, upon saving that feature, we can see that 90% of the users will be seeing Hello World Alternate 2, whilst 10% of the users will be seeing Hello World Alternate. If a user is not identified, they will still continue seeing the control value, which is Hello World. So if a user was accessing this feature and they were logged out, they would see the term Hello World. So to use variations, a user has to be identified. If a user isn't logging into your website, you'll have to come up with some form of GUID to identify your user until your user logs in. But assuming that you identify using the SDK, then they'll be using the variation percentages. You can use ABN tests and multivariate flags in combination with analytics. We support a variety of inbuilt analytics such as Amplitude, Datadog, Dynatrace, and so on. Enabling these integrations will automatically send up users remote configuration values and enabled states to your analytics platforms. This means that you can start treating feature flags and remote configuration as user traits and with your favorite analytics providers, track the success rate of users having certain values for their feature flags. Thanks for your time. Make sure you like, subscribe. We also would like to invite you to join us at our platform. We have a free plan. And also connect with us on Discord and GitHub. Links are provided in the video description. Reach out with any questions and comments you might have. And see you next time.